Good morning, Gold Creek. My name is Pablo, and I'm the worship pastor here at the Milk Creek campus. Thanks for joining us on day 160. Um, it's going to be another awesome day. If you're watching in the afternoon or the evening, we're glad that you're watching. Or even if you're a couple days behind and you're trying to catch up, great job doing that. Hopefully you, uh, you get all caught up here and um, get up to date with us. So like I said, I'm Pablo, and I am with... My name is Mike Borson, and I'm one of the drummers here at uh, Gold Creek. Yeah, and you've probably seen him rocking out, just smashing those drums and just enjoying it. I, uh, I hear that a lot, Mike. Everyone loves to see you drum and loves oh, really? to hear you drum. All right. And so it's been awesome, man. <laughs> it is awesome. I really enjoy uh, what I'm doing here, and I, I really enjoy the fact that people appreciate what I do here. So yeah. that it, it makes it all very worthwhile. Yeah, so. it's awesome. So how long have you been at Gold Creek and how long have you been playing? I've been here uh, about 14 years now. I came just uh, right about the time Craig was uh, leading and uh, I've been playing drums for, we'll say 50 plus years. <laughs> That's a long time playing drums. It is. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it's it's the only thing in my life besides breathing that I have done that long. Wow. So, And it seems yeah. like every time you play that, it's like you still enjoy it. You still love it. Oh, I do. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it is my passion. It is the one thing that I just go deep for. And I, I still discipline myself to practice, you know, as much as I can every week. That is so. awesome. That is a great lesson for all of us to learn no matter what you do, no matter what your passion is. You can always get better and enjoy it every day, right? I'm always learning. I'm still learning at, at my age right now. I'm not going to give that away, but uh, I'm <laughs> kind of did learning. by saying you've been playing over oh, I 50 guess. years. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. But no. yeah, I'm still learning all the time. So that's awesome. I love it. Well, let's uh, go ahead and dive in. So um, today's reading, um, it's actually interesting because some things were kind of like left in the like middle of the story. So we can't like, we don't have a starting point and we don't have an ending point. So we're just going to do our best and we're going to just talk about, you know, sure. what's uh, what we can today. So uh, first Kings chapter five, pretty much it's, um, you know, Solomon uh, just preparing uh, everything in order to build the temple, mm -hmm. right? He, um, he sends a messenger to King Hiram, I believe of Tyre, um, which is, and it says it's a, he's a loyal friend of David, which to me, I think it's, it's actually like um, a breath of fresh air to hear that because all throughout Psalms, as we've been reading, you, you read all these Psalms of David and, you know, asking God for help against all his mm -hmm. enemies yeah. and to crush them and to help him. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, sometimes like, man, I just, David can't catch a break. I know. You know, and so to see that he has a loyal friend in the king of, you know, in another place, I think that that's um that's good to hear. It is. But I mean, that's pretty much all I got. Did you get anything else from uh, from this I, chapter? I did, you know, kind of what I gathered from there is it says David sent throughout the land to look for all of the skilled craftsmen that he could find to help build this temple. So it wasn't like they were just throwing this thing up. He looked for the best craftsman that he could find to help. Construct yeah. This. Solomon had really, really thought this through and was like, Hey, I want to make mm -hmm. this as best as I can. And so that's just cool to hear. And just to think of the actual process moving into, um, chapter six, the actual building of the temple. It's just amazing to think of like how long it took him to build it seven years. Right. Mm -hmm. And all that talks about, you have mentioned earlier, you know, how just everything was plated with gold, like everything mm -hmm. was covered in gold and just the magnificence of this building, which is, you know, considered to be God's house, God's temple. And um, <clears throat> to me, I think what uh, kind of stood out in the first verse in one of the later sentences there says, it was 400 years after the people of Israel were rescued from their slavery in the land of Egypt that they started the construction oh, wow. of this temple. Wow. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of just like a random fact. It is. Like, it's just kind of oddly placed there. And I was wondering, like, first thing that pops in your head, why do you think that was placed there by, by the author 400 years after the people of Israel were rescued from their slavery is that they started the, building the temple? Not really sure, but I can tell you this. It was a long time. Uh, and that generation that made it through there had obviously died off. And now they have a new generation that they're building this temple, you know, with, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So. I think, I think it kind of somewhat, in my opinion, answers it in verse 12, um, where, well, actually verse 11, where it says, then the Lord gave this message to Solomon 
Concerning this temple you are building, if you keep all my decrees and regulations and obey my commands, I will fulfill through through you the promise I made to your father, David. I will live among the Israelites and will never abandon my people, Israel. Hallelujah. And it just seems like every generation, there's a new covenant. There's a new mm-hmm. affirmation of that cover of that covenant uh, with God and his people. And I think it's just, I think it's just a reminder that after almost 500 years, God is still faithful and God is mm-hmm. still keeping his promises like he did, you know, to Abraham, to Moses, to David. And it continues now through uh-huh. Solomon. Isn't that yes, powerful? That is. So yeah, that that was pretty cool, and I just thought it was interesting that it took seven years to build uh, the temple, which yeah. you see the number seven a lot throughout mm-hmm. the Bible, and it's like God's perfect number. It and is. so ever since I was young, I don't know, just that's been my favorite number, really? I guess, because right. of that. It's interesting. <laughs> it's also a number of completion, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's mm-hmm. just interesting. All right, let's move on now to um, <clears throat> Acts. We have Acts chapter seven. Um, so I'm going to give you just a little bit of um, a backstory here, a recap of Stephen and and what we're beginning to read. So um, one of the things that really stuck out to me, and this you might have uh, read in um, either yesterday or the days uh, or the passage from two days ago, uh, talking about you know Stephen and how he came to be chosen. And mm-hmm. I just kind of want to recap. It wasn't part of our reading, but just to give us a little idea of what we're talking about and who we're talking about here in Stephen, he was chosen because number one, he was well-respected. He was full of the spirit and full of wisdom. Mm -hmm. He was full of faith. And again, in a different verse, it says he was full of the spirit. And then a couple of verses after that, it says he was a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. Mm. So, I mean, this is a well-respected man. This is a man of God. And he wasn't a man that was hiding his uh, his uh, godly power either. He was going around, you know, taking care of business. He was he was there taking care of business mm-hmm. for sure. So um, that's who he was. And so it comes out that you know he's you know these Jews start debating him on different things, and he's mm-hmm. talking to them about Christ. And so and so they 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 can't keep up with him. He's just too wise, full mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So they get angry and they, and they they give this false testimony about him that he blasphemed against Moses and against mm-hmm. God. And, yeah. and that once you blaspheme against Moses to these Jews, I mean, he's like God and then Moses, right? So they take it seriously. And so now he's before the high council. He's pretty much on trial mm-hmm. and he's on trial here. And they're asking him, are these accusations true? And to me, it's so interesting how instead of just denying them and saying, no, these guys are lying. Like, why would I do Mm -hmm. that? I'm sharing, you know, the truth about Jesus Christ and this. He starts recapping the whole story of Uh Israel from starting from Abraham, going through, you know, the patriarchs, you know, and going through all these different things. And I'm just wondering, like, why do you think, why do you think he didn't just deny those claims? Because he was bold. He, like you said, he was full of the spirit. He was a man of faith and he wasn't going to back down from anybody or any situation. He was going to stand up and boldly proclaim, you know, what has happened and why we are, you know, where we are, why they were where they were. And he, so therefore he stood up and boldly proclaimed that, look, this is the way it is right here, you know, you know, this is the truth. Yeah. So, and I think that's yeah. awesome. And I think that's an awesome, like a lesson for us as well. I think, um, I don't know about you guys or you, Mike, but for me, when I'm accused of something and it's incorrect, I'm like, no, 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 I didn't do that. Why would I? And mm-hmm. I start, sure. I'm quickly to defend myself. Right. And maybe you are too, but I think this is a great example here. It's just like, he just recited the whole, you know, old mm-hmm. Testament to yeah. them almost yeah. and just leaned on God and is like, Hey, it doesn't matter what people say about me. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the truth. And, you know, and he offended all of them. He He offended all of them. And here's a little spoiler alert, like you might read tomorrow, but Stephen becomes the first martyr in the New Testament. He does, yeah. You know? That's powerful. That is extremely powerful. This man filled with the Holy Spirit, full of faith, full of power from God. He's... And can I just go on to say something a little further? It says when Stephen was getting ready to be stoned, he looked up and the heavens opened up and there was Jesus looking down at him. I mean, how powerful is that? That's amazing. Again, that was a little spoiler alert for tomorrow. Um, But 
our passage for today, we're kind of just left in like on a cliffhanger, uh-huh. right? And we didn't get to like, well, what, what happens with Stephen? He's kind of in the middle of his rebuttal and kind of offending all of the Jews and all the religious mm-hmm. people before they take him out. And, you know, as you read tomorrow, he gets stoned. So yeah, that's uh, that's powerful. Stephen is, uh, is a man of God and that's something mm-hmm. we should be yeah. striving to be, man or sure. woman of God. So let's continue here. Uh, we're almost done. So Psalms chapter 127, verse one through five. Um, I'll start off with verse one. It says, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. And unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. Um, I want to start off with that because I think it's this is important as you continue to read the whole chapter, we're talking about children, we're talking about family. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just it makes so much sense to me as I'm reading it. Unless the Lord builds a house, unless the Lord builds our family, Mm -hmm. right? Um, The work of the builders is wasted. So something that I've always just been passionate about is, you know, try my best to keep God number one in, mm-hmm. in our exactly. lives, in our yes. family. Uh-huh. You know, if this, if yep. God is in the center in our families, I mean, we're going to be broken. We're going to be issues and not that, you know, um, following God and keep putting them first, you know, all our problems go away, but it's important to have God as the center, as a foundation of our right. family. Right. Cause if exactly. he isn't is what we're reading right here. The work of the builders is wasted. We can do and try to be the best parents, the best husband, the best mm-hmm. wife, whatever, you know, but without God, it's just like we're never going to achieve that level and, of what where we should be. And and eventually, it just may end up all crumbling. Oh yeah! Mm. Oh my gosh! Especially sure. in this day and age that we're living in, mm-hmm. you see that happen so often. I see it all the time, and it's so sad. It's it so is. sad, and it just makes us wonder: what if God was truly the center of that family? Mm-hmm. Of that, you know, would that have happened? I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, but this is what the Bible says, and let's fast forward to. Verse three, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. Have you ever thought of your children as arrows? Arrows in my hand of a warrior. Arrows in the hand of a warrior. Uh, Yeah, because see, okay, here's what I see in that is that, see, we're teaching our kids all the time. And if we're teaching them to be, you know, mighty men of God, you know, to stand up for what we believe in and to be bold, those kids are going to be powerful kids. They're not going to go around and be like bullies on the playground, but they're going to stand up and let people know what's right. And that right there is a warrior. Oh, absolutely. It is, you know. That's so, a good warrior to have right there, yeah. right? How many kids do you have? Uh, I have five. Five kids. Yes, I have four girls and one boy. We held out for the boy. And uh, uh, let <laughs> I, me just, tell you. I'm curious, would you have kept going if you had five girls? Or would that you know, have been that's, done? That's a good question. I'm not really <laughs> sure. We never went that far. <laughs> never went that far. And you're like, thankfully, <laughs> oh, we didn't. Yeah, well, you got, really. you got a bunch of arrows in your... Yes, uh, <laughs> definitely. That's awesome. Um, and the last thing here is in Proverbs 16, 28, verses 30. This, okay, now, as you've probably already known, you've been reading with us, Proverbs is just pretty straightforward. You know, it it's, there's, there's not much to it. It's just... I think what stood out to me in verse 30, where it says, with narrowed eyes, people plot evil. With a smirk, they plan their mischief. Like to me in my head, I'm like, okay, with narrowed eyes, what does that mean? When someone goes like this, and when they have a little, you know, a little smirk, like, oh, you know, it's like, I'm about to get into some trouble right now. Be careful with those people. Don't be that person, you know, and don't, (laughs) and and you'll be blessed by that. So anything else you want to add? Uh, well, as far as that one goes right there, you know, I think some of us in our past were that kind of person. And, you know, hallelujah, praise be for the grace of God yeah. that, you know, we can now say that we're no longer those people, but we're steering people away from that path. And so, you know, uh, that's how I look at that scripture right there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us today, day 160. It's always uh, fun to be with you guys and and talk a little bit about the Bible. And if you didn't love this guy already, I had no doubt in my (laughs) mind that you're going to love him or even more now. So thanks, Mike, for being here with us. Well, thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you guys next time. All right.